Okay. Okay. I did. Okay. So there's a little bit of a historical thing going on here. In the original Omnext, uh, it was protocol based. And of course, as you know, in protocols, you have to specify everything the protocol wants uh, as, you know, as a function like thing. And that was a macro that actually, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so ident was always a function. Right? right. And so what you did was you received props. You might have received this as well, but you definitely received props. And what you were supposed to do was return a vector using code that figured out what you wanted your ident to be. So if it was a dynamic ident, uh, you know, you would be writing the code to pull the props out and put it in the second element. Okay. And if it were some weird component where you wanted the first element to change, you might write code for that, right? Okay. So you need the Lambda version because sometimes you want to customize the ident to be a very specific thing okay. and it might be dynamic. So you, you've got to have this Lambda and actually the argument on line 24 should have props in it, right? Because you receive the props because the ident of a particular instance of a component, uh -huh. like a person, is going to have an ID that you need to pull out and put into that vector. Got it. Right? So that's okay. why there's a Lambda version is you might just need to manually code it. Okay. Now, as we used, you know, built Untangled and then used it for a while, it became obvious that there were some very specific patterns. Pattern number one uh, that was very common, and, and this is another historical thing. Early on, uh, David Nolan had sort of suggested you use the table names, table names with a, a keyword like person slash by ID. Uh, where, where you were saying what it was sorted by or what it was indexed by, what was in the map, right? right? So person slash by ID, and you put the person ID in there, but then the person had a person slash ID keyword. Right. When Wilker started working on Pathome and <laughs> the Pathome resolver said, you know what? The person ID is really nice. It's really nice for that to be in the ident because that tells Pathome where to start, like what the identity of the thing is. Right. This person by ID is actually not good. It right. doesn't help us. So we should we should name the tables after the IDs. Right. And that helps with patho. Yeah. So we evolved to, oh, well, you know, they, they, uh, um, I'm sorry, sorry. The middle step was we evolved <laughs> to, well, we could make a shorthand here since very often the first one's a constant and the second one comes from props. We can make a shorthand where if you give us just a vector, what we'll do is we'll use the first thing as a constant and we'll pull the second thing from props. Okay. In my opinion, that was a bad idea in hindsight uh -huh. because it's, it's, it, it's too magical. Okay. Right? It does something partially dynamic for you that's trivial to write in code. Why bother? Yeah. So then as we worked with it a little more, we realized, you know what? Very often we want the table name to be the same as the, the property name for the ID. And so there's only one keyword to name. It's the yeah. ID. Name. It's the name of the ID. And so the, in my opinion, the two useful forms for ident or you just give it a keyword and what the keyword means is that's both the table to put it in and how yep. to find the ID in an instance. Yep. And the Lambda form where you, what you just want to do is give it a complete constant yep. or calculate it in some way or use right. a bar or, you know, something like that. Got it. So those so, are the two forms I recommend. The, the middle form, that, that middle ground that we you know, kind of evolved through, I don't recommend using that one because it's just confusing. So uh, if I hear you correctly, I might as well just do that. No, that's the no. Wrong. Okay. That's the one that I said. That's the one that I, I said I don't Ooh. like. If you do that one, it'll try to find colon colon button test in the map of things, which will find nil. Oh god! Oh oh nil. oh oh! That has a implicit. Okay, that triggers a different middle path that has a whole bunch of other. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. What I'm happened? Just going... What it evolved from? Let's say person. Let's just use person because yeah. you have instances of those, right? It evolved from you wrote the lambda and you said bracket colon UI person open paren, colon UI person on props. Okay. Right? So the ident was UI person as a constant, pull UI person out of the props, and that gave you your ident. Yeah, type that out, because that was... <laughs> okay, I always use ident in... <laughs> uh, well... Uh, this, is, this is for me. Uh, okay. Form. Uh, That's yeah. for if the ident's either constant yep. or irregular. What I mean by irregular is it doesn't follow this other pattern that I'm going to tell you, which is the most common pattern. The most common pattern is you want to use the table name, uh, uh, the ID keyword as the table name. Yep. 
Like for example, that one you just say ident and you just give it the keyword. Yeah, person no ID. You just story, give it. Key. Yeah, story ID. Yeah. All right. When okay. when the pattern is colon story ID and then pulling the story ID out of props as yep. the second element. I think you're you're not hearing me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, um, no, I, I can hear you fine. No, I mean I, I think you're you're not understanding what I'm. Oh, oh right, right, right. Uh, so what you what you used to do is is I'll, I'll type it in slack here okay actually i think i i don't even know i, I just gotta um in fact I, here's i think all i need to know <laughs> right so this is what you used to always write yes right? ah right so we said you know what that's repetitive why don't we just make it so that if you specify story slash id story slash id that that means that yeah, it's okay. like, you know what? That's kind of stupid. That's repetitive too. Why don't you just say story slash ID and that will mean the first one. Yeah. And a two, oh, yeah. A, a, a vector of two does not mean what I think it means. <laughs> and that's that's right, why I said right. that middle one, I should probably just delete from the documentation. Right. Because the reason that middle one exists is because of that step I told you about where we were due to early om um, next experience, we were naming uh, the table different. Yeah. from the ID. And so what we were writing was story hyphen by ID yeah. or by, by hyphen ID. We were writing that. Right. That was the middle ground. Right. In fact, uh, it, right. Yeah. Let's just, um, for the sake of, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I, I mean, this okay. is in the book. It, it describes exactly what it does. Thing is people don't read the book. <laughs> You're right, or or I read it and it just didn't mean anything to me. Yeah, it okay. just, it just goes. Yeah, convention. I, I think it's very obvious to me. Just use the function form, <laughs> and I'll, I'll keep right. myself out of trouble. Yeah, that, okay. that that doesn't hurt anything. The only thing you lose with that form uh, is uh, just like initial state, the macro can error check it if it's not in lambda. So as long as that the vector is not of length two, you're fine. Okay. Right. The most common pattern for dynamic things like stories is that you want to use the keyword that is the ID keyword as the table name, in which case you can just use the keyword as the yep. ident as the ident descriptor. Yep. Okay, great. I'm still gonna so, write that function for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got it. So uh, so now we're just looking at okay, why okay. does it okay? So now what we want to do, the way you diagnose this is uh, did you pass it the props? No, you didn't. See, there's your problem on line 36. Right? You got you got, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, uh, one level above the, the user of this where it's not, yeah, 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 yeah. You had um, it, you, you weren't even destructuring the prop before, right? Buttons is unused. So you're not passing buttons to uh, the button test one. Wait, 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 am I not doing that? Oh, you misspelled it. See right there. This is why I wanted to go back through the query and the ident and props. Uh, wait a minute, what? I misspelled it. it and you put it in the query in that form, you use template mode initial state, you it you would not have made this typo because it wouldn't have compiled. What do you mean I mistyped it? I, I'm, I'm still not seeing it. This is <laughs> this is why, yep. You see I'm like, right Buttons. there where you're first. Oh. Right? Stop destructuring it there. Destructure it in the top because the top error checks it. Yeah. Remember, oh. I just showed you, if you mistype it up there, you get an error message. If you mistype it down there, <laughs> all bets are off. And by the way, I do appreciate this, the lengths that you've made everything very IDE friendly. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge with closure in particular. So yeah, yeah, so now if you'd misspelled it in the destructuring, you'd gotten a destructuring error. And if you misspelled it here, you got a regular compiler because it would have been an unknown symbol. Okay, got it. Okay, love it. Okay, great. No so way to screw it up that way. Okay, perfect. And so, yeah, so uh, this is just from experience, right? The earlier, the very early Omnix stuff didn't do any of this. And we were just constantly scratching our heads. Trying to figure <laughs> out, Why am I not getting this? Here? Right. right. So that th these modes of the macro are here because of that experience of, oh, why don't we just let the macro catch all this? Because it's, it's just, it's right. It's temp it's, it's, it's very easy to, to have the macro look at that at compile time and say, yep, you're screwing up. So if I heard you correctly, right, uh, the way these kind of macros got created was 
fixing issues just like this. <laughs> Some yeah, strange short runtime that it would have been ideally better to find at compile time. Yep, exactly. Freaking love it. Okay, awesome. All right. Uh, okay. So this stuff kind of it kind of evolved. You know, Untangled had this this problem as well because it was you know it was using Omnext macro at the beginning. And so as I continue to work on it, it's like, yeah, this isn't good enough. I want something that's more concise. I want something that catches these errors. Um, love it. Love it, love it. Okay. Oh, this is this is great. I'm, I'm smiling. Um, initial state doesn't exist in Omnext either. You had to manually compose that tree elsewhere. I mean, it's trivial to add it to Omnext with your own code, but nobody did. Um, yeah. That was something I figured out in Untangled. I was like, I need this tree of data. Why aren't I just composing and it? I am appreciating it. I, I'm totally, I mean, you just watched me. Like I, I couldn't figure out like why, why the button wasn't rendering. Okay, good, good. Okay, next one. This is the diagnostic for 90% of problems. Well, in fact, this it. is, yeah. but I'm not sure if, um, in that Rich Hickey video where he said, yeah, like uh, uh, information problems versus whatever right and then he said if, if you have a ui it's you know this <laughs> that becomes a dot within whatever and, and that, that's like a big aha moment i mean i think that's what really hooked me was if you can get the data in the right shape i, th I think what you just said is mm -hmm. just showing that like what what this forces you to do is like get all the data in the right shape and then the, the fulcrum machinery just takes care of the rest right you don't, that you don't have to so think appealing about the state the stateful stuff kind of melts away from the ui yeah Right, and you try to think of ways of structuring it so that that, that happens because you can still structure in a way that screws things up, right? You yep. can still use React component local state and say, okay, I'm going to embed that there, and I'm just going to wiggle that. I'm going to wiggle that bit inside of the component, and and now it's like this mutable thing that I've embedded in my application. And from a local standpoint, it seems like a good idea, and then you run into the various problems down the line of, oh, I need to know what that is in the parent. Yeah, I know what it is in the parent. Oh, then I write some weird callback where I both change it in my local state or I move the state <laughs> to the parent or, right? You just end up with all these nightmares. And this this idea that you can just like put the data in the right form and then make the rendering a pure function of, yeah. of that state is just, it, it was very appealing to me back when I first started on this. Uh, the Omnext vision, or like the, the, or the vision that you were trying to take down with Fulcro? Yeah. 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 I mean, the, just, there were there are a lot of things that David I think was exploring in all next that um, I didn't keep. Yeah. Uh, that I think were just like they were they were valuable things to play with and tinker with and might even be valuable in specific applications. Um, but some of them added a, a level of complexity to the to app to the application that wasn't necessary for what I needed it for. Right to that. Yeah. In fact, just just because I want to concretize this, just because I want yeah. to write it down eventually. So the, to quote Rick Hickey, he was saying, oh, if you take a look at the problem space of an application, it's dominated by the information process versus the logic. So it's yeah. the <laughs> logic is actually quite small compared to the uh, idiosyncratic things that the world forces you to do. Yep, and then he says, if you have a UI, all that just shrinks down to this little dot and the UI idiosyncrasies dominate. Yeah, and often, yep. yeah. Yeah, right. and, and uh, if I understand would you agree with the statement is that by having all the structure sort of removes those idiosyncrasies or, or it, it encourages a discipline around? It, it, that's more it, yeah. right? The programming is about patterns, Yeah. right? Effective programming is really about patterns. I don't care what programming language you choose. Um, if you just go like code in some random direction in that programming language, you're gonna make a mess, yeah. right? And it's, it's true that some programming languages make it easier to establish clean code than others, but you know, I, 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 you know, I still write some code in Java, and I occasionally work in Scala, and you know, I, I, I work in these. I still write some C now and then, right? Like uh, the right tool for the job yep. is, is what I think should be done. That said, I mostly work in Closure and Closure Script because it gives me all sorts of other, uh, all yeah. sorts of interesting advantages. But if you don't follow good patterns, you're just going to create a mess. I don't care yeah, what yeah. you're, you're just going to. Let me point to my next one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, the keyboard of like um, greater than, less than is, well, actually, uh, so if I, right now I'm in the main mode and I go into a search mode. And I'm really concerned about your route switch time. That's really bizarrely slow. We'll go, we'll go next, there next, yeah. or maybe we'll, we'll go there first. So this mode, uh, so, you know, one of the things I want to build is if I hit the question mark, okay. there'll be a little pop down. There'll just be a, just a little 
thing here that says, you know, here's the keyboard accelerators, right? And so I'll probably tuck that into mode too. So there'd be UI mode to search and, you know, show help, you know, true, false. But I'm just, I'm befuddled at why it's too deep. So in the so query- I'm a little confused as to what you're trying to do with UI mode. Well, I, <laughs> so, um, but don't you know the current route? Oh, uh, uh, that's a great question. <laughs> So um, the way the keyboard accelerators work right now mm -hmm. is I just need to know, like, uh, you know, that partition thing that we built together. Yeah. I need to know what the source is. Is it all stories or is it the searched result stories? Mm -hmm. And each one of those live in either main stories, main or stories search. Right. Um, so I got to store that state somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't belong in the container, yep. I don't think, right? Um, here's 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 what I would suggest. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's 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 talk about the general nature of the problem. Let's just ignore Fulcro altogether. Yeah. Right. Because this isn't, in my opinion, this isn't a Fulcro specific problem. This is like let's reason about what what's going on here. Yeah. You have uh, keyboard shortcuts. Yep. Keyboard shortcuts uh, consume a global resource. Yes. Right. There's a single keyboard in your entire machine, and that's that has to be refocused to a different thing in the application as you navigate around, right? Yep. Um, that's very similar to the URL, right? As you navigate around the URL, you have one URL that you can be on because it's yep. a browser. It's showing one page, right, in concept. Yep. And to me, those two, therefore, go together. When I'm on a route, I should install my keyboard shortcuts for that route. When I leave that route, I should uninstall my keyboard shortcuts for that route. To me, this is a routing issue. This is a <laughs> routing issue, right? Uh, interesting. And I just let me confirm. Now let's take it a step further. Yeah. If you think about the routing function call that Rad gives you, route to, what does it take? It takes the target, fi final target path, right? The thing you want to go to, right? I want to go to button test one, or I want to go to screen three, whatever, yeah. right? That's what it takes as an argument. You could write a wrapper function, your own route function, yeah. that can do these kinds of extra operations. And you can hang the keyboard shortcut code on that target because you can read the component options from that. Component options map is an extensible map. So you can co-locate your keyboard shortcut code with the component that has the keyboard shortcuts, if it's okay. a wrap. Uh, okay, where would that live, the component map? Uh, that would live. It's not a component map. No, no, no. no go, uh, sorry, go, no. So, so go to one of these things that has keyboard shortcuts, like stories main. Yeah. Uh, stories main. Story search. Yeah. Okay. Go to the scroll up. That yes. that map of options, query, ident, initial state. You yep. can put new keywords in there that you invent. Yeah. Okay. So colon keyboard hyphen shortcuts. Right. Or yeah. or. If you want it to be declarative, right? You could say keyboard shortcuts. Uh, here's one way of doing it that yep. comes to mind. Keyboard shortcuts, yep. make it a map. Yep. Uh, then give it the, as the keys, give it the, the what key you want them to press, like J or K as yep. a string yep. or a key event or whatever, yep. right? And then as a value, give it a mutation name, just the symbol. Yep. What, what mutation to run? Ha. <laughs> right? And so now when you go the route to, the route to can say, oh, I'm gonna uninstall the current keyboard shortcuts. And then when I see what route I'm going to, I'll look to see if it has keyboard shortcuts. And if it does, I'll put that in my atom that tracks which ones that are currently available. And now your global code that's handling the keys that are coming in can just look in this map and run the mutation. Done. <laughs> if you want. If you want to make it a, a, a little, and like there's there's a yeah, couple yeah. of questions that immediately come to my mind is, okay, how do I express like control J or alt F or yeah. whatever, right? And, and not but. to get too, um, I'm using mousetrap to do this. Yeah, sure. Uh, and I but guess- you can unbind those, right? I, I, right, I, mean, I was just gonna look that up. I mean, uh, um, yeah, so that's the whole idea is, is, is mousetrap is a stateful mutable JS thing. Yeah. And so you want to hide that from, what you have to do in Fulcro. Unbind. Oh. Is there a clear? Is there one that just resets? Yeah, mousetrap reset, right? That would just clear it. Wow. 
Testing amazing. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, so anything that is state specific, and and so just uh, let's see, let me just sort of march through the logic. Um, and so that means next story, all, all these that have depend on state. Now that you can pass in the state instead of having the state live in some sort of gl global thing, mm -hmm. is that right? Well, okay. So let's let's talk about that. So. The other thing that you've got going on here, and that, this is a great, oh, wait. I mean, this is a little design session, right? Yeah. So next story needs to know which thing it's changing, right? Yep. It needs to know what the current route is. Yes. Right. If it knew the current route, then it could automatically figure that out. Well, the current route is something you can ask for out of state from dyna the dynamic routing system. You can just ask for the current route. Actually, uh, if you notice, and so they actually, do. stand by. Uh, <laughs> Oh, this is so fun. Um, uh, you so the route out. is oh. not telling me. Oh, I just need to put a route segment. No, I did. Um, so all it knows is that I'm in Maine. How come? Um, <laughs> did you route to story search? Or story? No, I didn't. I didn't change the route. I just uh, had a conditional on the mode and then rendered either story search or stories main. Oh, yeah, you should put another router in there. Right, just nest it in another router and then let the router take care of which one's which. Or, I mean, why can't you just have, why can't you just support search in stories period, stories main or stories whatever, yeah. and not have two separate places to go. Right, 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 right. Uh, Oh, because I was trying to prove that I could write one. <laughs> and then, oh. yeah. All right, yeah. so you complicated your life just trying to prove something else. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in terms of, of designing a library feature, that's roughly what I would do. Yeah. Um, and you, Actually, you, know, you can, can I pause for a moment? Yes. Um, so really, the way in the ideal. And that would be a back tick on your mutation because it's needs to be a symbol, a fully qualified symbol, right? So you'd have it like yeah, um, alias or whatever and pull in the full mutation symbol. Um, next story, it would take, uh... now if you want, what you could do is back tick and make it a list, make it the actual transaction. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. Just make right, it a vector right. with a mutation call in it. I'm sorry, I, uh, you mean comp transact this? No, no comp transact, just the vector with the call in it. Okay, I'm just gonna type and uh, yep. Yep. Uh, just a vector. Vector, open paren, mutation, next, you know, next story. Yep. Parameters. And then so stories would be. Uh, now you don't have anything you can close over here. So you really can only give it constants. Right, so, but if I do a transaction, then I can feed it. But you have to think, where's the transaction happening from? That's always happening globally, right? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yep, yep. Let me let me take this. Call. Yep, yep, yep. That, that was actually Liz. <laughs> uh, good. <laughs> Trying to get that form. <laughs> um, let's assume. Very helpful. Um, 
let's assume that I do want a place and put it in the query. Yet. Hey, I'm a fan. Um, <laughs> There's three head scratchers saved. It's great. No, that, that's uh, effing superb. Okay, let's suppose I do want like a place where I can just store all the state for the application state. So, and for now, Ooh, I'm just. That's what the state atom is. Okay, yeah, that was going to be my next question. So, I don't want to park it in this component ID mode. I want to, um, I want to change that so that I, this is something I'm going to directly manipulate the state atom. So it will show up. Okay, give me your goal. What's your goal? Uh, I want a place to park. I want a map to park all application related state that's uh, that's that above the all the components. Atom. I'm sorry. Uh, the state atom. You you mean do you mean something like the user session? No, it's a uh, place like do I show help or not? If I hit question mark, it will toggle. Uh, potentially, I would park the uh, the mode that I'm in. Um, okay. So whether or not uh, uh, help is showing is a property of the help component. The help component has a constant <laughs> ident, and you just toggle it. Paths indications okay. are almost always three deep, right? Component ID, help, visible, question mark. Got it. Got, uh, okay, hang on. So the, the state for the help component about whether it gets displayed or not lives in not a global atom, but in the local in the in the component. Yeah, either in the help component or the thing that lays things out that includes the help component. Yeah. One of those two components is what decides whether it gets rendered, right? That's where the if logic's gonna be that says whether or not, you know, whatever. Got it. If, you're using, if you're using a modal with it, right? It's gonna end up being a portal to the root of the DOM anyway. Yeah. And you're just gonna say active or not active on that modal, which makes it pop open or not pop open. So it, okay. the component's the perfect place to put it. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so when you hit the question mark thing, the keyboard thing will do a global call to a mutation, which will change the help, the component help, uh, show question mark, Yep. toggle it. Yep. And now there's local reasoning, right? You have a, a global thing, it's one global fact, it yeah. just happens to live on the thing that you care about, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's easier to find later. Yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. mean that thing? Well, I at least know it's in this component that's the help component. Okay, it doesn't belong in this mode thing. Okay. No, the idea of a mode is almost always an, an anti pattern in folk. Okay. Got, the so idea of tracking something that could be stored local to the thing you're reasoning about or can be derived. For example, yep. here's, the, here's the, the quintessential example in, in, from my perspective where people make this mistake. Yep. You've got a list of to do items, and yep. there are four to do items. Yep. And you want a check all and an uncheck all. Yeah, I implemented this from the exercise. Yeah. Yes. Do you make a check all, uncheck all state? No. <laughs> no, no. Right. you read the four items and see if they're all checked, right? Because yep. then it's just a pure declaration that can't be incorrect. It can't yep. get out of sync. It can't screw up like that. Everything's just going to be right. Yep. So as soon as you start moving these things into like these like separate places that are disconnected from the real component that uses them or are disconnected from something that can be easily derived. The other temptation to do uh, that is for speed. It's like, oh, well, I need to know how many items are in this thing. Uh, and so I'm, I don't want to count them every time. Yep, yep. I'm going to cache the count. The answer ah. then is, well, use a vector because vector has a constant time count, right? <laughs> yep. Well, um, well, okay, we're getting the two things that are on my list. Yeah. So right now, mode. So I created a transaction called set mode, mm -hmm. to main and search, right? And uh, and a get mode, which I just parked on the. Actually, yeah, get mode shows. This will demonstrate that I didn't so, quite get something, <laughs> right? Um, so my get mode. actually opens up <laughs> uh, you know the mode UI mode which uh, seemed peculiar when I wrote it but I was just trying to get something running right so if you know that that's where <laughs> that components mode thing is and you've namespaced that function to that and same namespace as that component that's a reasonable thing to do um, I don't necessarily think I would pass the state atom to a getter, I would pass the state map. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Um, and um, then in terms of your, yeah, so this is an okay thing to do, right? Running a, although I, I wouldn't transact a set mode inside of a switch mode mutation, that's kind of an odd thing to do. You've got the state admin, you could just do it. Wait, wait, say that again. Um, you looking at this? Yeah, you're running a new transaction inside of a transaction. Oh, 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 right, 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 right. right. Whereas this is why I have people write what I call helper function. So get mode is one I would consider sort of a helper function if you were passing it the state map. And that line 34. Uh, oh, oh, got it. Right, right, right. You're saying I, I'm already inside. Why don't I just execute? This? Why don't you just do that? Yeah, yeah. Right. And since, yeah, if you look in the book, I talk quite a bit about this. Like you can make a function on the state map that does the associ in, call that set mode star. And then in this function, you could say swap state set mode star. And then in the other function, you could say swap state set mode star. And then you don't have to repeat the same code over and over again. You're actually quote, calling a function still. Right, right, right. And to address your comment, so I, I'm going gonna, gonna to show you like another problem. Uh, well, let's do that, that has to do with mode. Because I really do think this mode thing that you're trying to do for the purpose you're trying to do it for would be better served by a route. Well, actually, there's a question I have. Okay, um, Understood. Okay. Let, let me give you one other. Well, before we leave this, what I'm a little bit vexed <laughs> that when I when I display what the mode is, I expected to see UI mode search, not UI mode a, a map within a map. Yeah, why? Huh? Well, we'd have to just look at the data. I don't know why uh, you're seeing what you're seeing. So inside of story container. Mm -hmm. If I do a get query. Okay, you made UI mode a uh, join right there. I made, well, uh, I, okay, what? I mean, I, I see a UI mode here and I see a UI mode here. Right, but you did a subquery. Okay, uh, all right, keep going. I'm, I'm listening, I'm not right, understanding. You see, you see that the UI mode is a map that joins to a subquery of UI mode, which explains why you're getting what you're getting. Ah. Well, it doesn't completely explain it. If you've initialized state properly, that's what you would see is what you're seeing in the screen. Is UI mode meant to be a scalar value or a nested component? Well, um, sorry for the noise. Um, that's all right. It's not actually much over here. I set it to, well, yeah. I, I imagine a world where I decided to park, um, UI show help here, right? Okay. Uh, whether that's the right thing to do or not. Um, okay. All right. Just so, so yeah, it's a map. Okay. Yep. Then, then your mutation is correct. Yeah. Your getter is correct, and your uh, so I guess this makes sense to you that it's a uh, well. Okay, so you're saying that that's not, no, no, you're not showing me the code for that string. Oh, that string has a lowercase m. Oh, I see. There's the uppercase m. That's the other one. Okay, so the second one says you're saying string of mode. Yeah. But mode is supposed to be just main. And you've not composed a subquery for that one. What are you passing to UI mode down in the other guy? Uh. It's right there. Just scroll down, right? Wait, am I not here? Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more. Um, All right. Mode. Yeah, that, looks, that looks okay. And then. Oh, wait. Dompy mode. Right. Now scroll down a little more. Yeah. Case. Uh, what are you doing there? Well, I'm. <laughs> well, because I, I have to. Well, uh, this is your problem. This is yeah. your problem right here. Like UI stories main, you're passing UI mode down. Why are you passing UI mode down? Why, uh, why isn't that just mode? Oh no, it can't be mode because mode doesn't belong there, right? You've you've miscomposed state and props again. So you're doing the case on 349, which is reasonable because you've actually embedded mode one level deeper, right? I, uh, help me explain it. I, I would I would have thought 
I, I'm just bewildered. I, I would have thought it would be. Actually, that's weird. Um, <laughs> Scroll back up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so you did compose UI mode here. UI yeah. mode has a constant ident, which means independent of where you nested in the tree, you will get the one UI mode period. So there's no need yep. down in the case statement to look any further than the UI mode of mode. So scroll back down to your case. Yeah. Uh, UI mode of mode, you're done. UI mode, of, yeah, right. So I, I could raise this. Yeah, you could raise that. But, uh... right. And then UI stories main, there's no reason to pass anything to that but main. Right. Uh, I think this. I was hacking around to make this work, uh, but I don't think this will work anymore. <laughs> well, well, let's let's keep diagnosing though. Yeah, right? yeah. So scroll back up. Yeah. UI main goes to stories main. You got story search. Okay, but you need the mode in those guys as well. Is that is that the case? Uh, but each one of those also fetches its, its mode. Uh, so if I go, if, if I understand it's correctly, the one mode. It's the one and only mode. Right. It's, it's an ident based thing. You only yep. have one in the database, so they will all end up yep. with it composed into themselves with idents pointing to all right. to that same one. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yes, uh, there's only one, T totally get that. Um, so so jump into stories main now. Okay, so you recompose mode again, that's fine. Uh, ident is different thing. You you reinitialized it, but that's just at startup, so that's no big deal. Uh -huh. um, okay, and then scroll on down. And by the way, uh, this uh, is my way of uh, uh, kind of telling <laughs> telling which mode I'm in. It's the responsibility. That, so I mean, I, I uh, you can sort of sm that's a, obviously a smell. Oh yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so if you reload the application now. Yeah. Because we've, we've sort of mucked around with stating things. Okay, so you're not seeing any values here, right? You see story container. Uh, yeah, why are we getting this nested UI mode, UI mode main? I don't know. See, UI show oh. true is definitely right. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, one more time, please. Oh, it's your mutation. Your mutation's screwing it up. If you go to set mode, I bet set mode is putting that map inside of UI mode. You're supposed to be, yeah. Go to your set mode mutation. This is the other problem with side effecting on mount is it is it creates this weirdness. Yeah, and okay. Don't, don't recommend side effecting on that, right? Uh, you didn't destructure UI mode from your parameters. You're putting the entire map at UI mode. You're doing this to yourself. Line 29. That's yeah. Your params. Ah. And you should be pulling UI mode out of params. Or what's that? Well, mean? there you go. No, no, no. That's not, that's, that's in. Out of params. Params is the argument you just named params. Yeah. Uh, and mode comes out of params. Correct. You, you passed UI mode at, in the map that is params. Uh, uh, say that one more time. I passed, okay, yeah. this that not is mode is, right. That is the full parameters that has UI mode in it. Uh, yeah. Got it. So this is params. Oh, okay, got it. So, so yeah, um, so just do a UI mode uh, on that. Yeah, colon UI slash keys kind of thing. Yeah. Yep, that'll fix your string. So now if you reload, you'll see that the side effect that you're doing in the component did mount doesn't screw it up now <laughs> and uh, you'll see what you expect to see. And that will also cause your case statement to do the right thing because now right. instead of getting a map, the case should match the, oh, right? Yeah. Assuming that we didn't screw up somewhere else. Got it. So this case statement. Um... Containers. Now this is just case mode. Mm -hmm. No, is that right? Um, well, I don't know. How are you destructuring it? Oh, wait. 
Okay, so this works. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. So yeah, yeah, so that's right now. Um, and so now it's it's somewhere in the logic of um, uh, hang on. I, I, UI mode main. So it's uh, I wonder if it's bear with me while I uh, get stories state and stories arguments back to get state and stories arguments. That was just it being slow. Oh, I see what's happening. The reason it's slow is you're running guardrails and there's you've put a guardrail spec on that function that's really slow. Ah. Yeah, don't spec that one because you're passing the state map and it's huge and has a whole bunch of keys in it that might have specs and it's going to spec check that entire I'll map. leave it in for uh, for just a little bit longer because this No, I mean if you just not What's that? Uh, believe it or not, uh, this used to be keyword, and it actually caught me. <laughs> it actually saved my butt a couple of times. Okay, yeah. so yeah, the problem is map question mark unfortunately checks all the keys in the map. Ah, uh, and there's eight thousand. Exactly, and that's yeah. why that's why you're routing slow. So we've discovered that. Okay. Um, case M. What is M? M is search. Wait, hang on. M is UI mode of mode. Yeah. The mode is being passed in. Should satisfy a map. Right. Ah, it's now a keyword. I, I think this will fix it. Uh, case M <laughs> is now mode. If I just do. Well, undo that. I'll show you a quicker way of fixing it because you've got M used in multiple places. Move left one. Yep, and rename. Uh, and, and yeah, do a rename and then then delete it. Yeah. And rename that guy to mode. Yep, and then just kill the two things and you're done. Yep. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then uh, your conjecture that uh, you don't have to remove the second vector. What? <laughs> because it's just an expression that it's just, gets. I mean, it's it's it adds a little bit of inefficiency because at runtime it makes the map every time. Oh my gosh. But if you just want it there and because you think you might turn it back into a greater depth in, you can. Oh do my that. gosh, that's wicked. <laughs> not going to hurt anything significantly. That's great. Uh, okay, so you're claiming that, that will put my speed up. Yeah, you probably have another one. We should get a warning message around that. Okay. Um, no, but but whatever happened to your commercial offering of guardrails? Um, it's, it's kind of paused right now. I lost, the, I lost the help that was helping me with it and Got I don't it. have time myself to, to do yeah, it. I, I am eagerly awaiting that. That will be the, yeah, I would I, like to be the first to buy, uh, be a paid tester. I, yeah, I, someone I, who pays the right for the privilege of being able to test. Yeah. I appreciate that. The thing is, I don't, I don't have enough market data that shows me it's economically viable to switch gears and do it. Understood. So, yep. Uh, um, I have thought about running a Kickstarter or something and see if I can get enough. Oh, Steve. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Hey, Gene, what's up? Uh, hey, can I give you a call in about uh, th 20, 30 minutes? I'm sorry, I'm uh, 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 work for you? It <laughs> really would work for me because I'm having a chocolate chip cookie now that my daughter Perfect. made. And, and, so oh, aren't you, are, is your road trip not happening? Road trip? Uh, I thought you were off on an outing. Uh, Catskills Mountain? No, that's tomorrow. Oh, got it. Okay, cool, cool. I'll catch you later today. Thank you. Uh, like half hour yeah. or so. See you, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, Evo, come here. Take this. <laughs> what was that? Uh, sorry about that. Um, that's all right. Uh, I, I think it would make the world a better place. And the fact that, uh, yeah, Kickstarter, uh, yeah. do it. I would, uh, I'll help. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh yeah i just yeah I, at, the, at the moment i just don't have the bandwidth i i, I think it would make the world a better place too i i'm also concerned at what adoption rate it would actually get 
Like, you know, just both, there's the economic viability question of will people pay for it? And I think the answer to that is yes, businesses will pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, like if your team comes to you and says, hey, you know, can we buy this thing that's 10 bucks a month for 10 developers? You know, businesses don't think anything of that. Like, sure, go ahead, go for it. So, you know, kind of a free for non-commercial use model sort of like Cursive has would probably work. The problem then is for Gar for Copilot to give you real good information you have to you have to actually do pretty good specs, yeah. which which also means all the libraries you use have to have pretty good specs. Yeah. Okay. And we'll so, just park that for a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. a whole, it's a whole infection of the ecosystem sort of proposition, which yeah. means there's a high probability people wouldn't adopt it just because there's too much of a curve. Understood. You know? But I'm a, I'm a you know I I actually used um whatever uh, guardrails is based on um go <coughs> I'm sorry. Ghost wheel. Yeah, I I, 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 I love it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I, loved well, I, I, I find it extremely useful as well, but I have found cases like this one we're running into uh, where just the way spec works and the fact that it's slow <coughs> and intractable to do it in your runtime development mode. Yes. So I end up stripping them. I end up doing what we just did. I end up stripping them out <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, I'm no longer protected, but. <coughs> Okay, we are. Um, oh, okay. So now, get mode. Okay, this is great. Um, should we? There's something else that <coughs> I think lives at this kind of application state level. Yep. Um, and I'll just park the the routing thing for now. So okay. one of the things that um, the implementation of the previous next function that we wrote together mm -hmm. can take up to eighty milliseconds if there's a you know, 8,000 uh, to go, I think it's the, the partition and then the linear search. Sure, yeah, yeah. So um, I made, <clears throat> uh, it's just, I love closure, it just makes, I can't believe I got this right in the first time or should be right. Um, it's the, I made a, somewhere, oh, I just made a map. <laughs> For, uh, given the story ID, right, show me the previous and next. So I just uh, took that partition Oh, I and, see. Yeah. So okay, but where do I where do I store it? <laughs> I, I think you know I was gonna store it in the mode <laughs> or in the story container or wh where do I where do I store this lookup map cache? Right. So so now you're getting into a where yeah. So let's talk. About <laughs> if you look at the guts of rad uh, reports and forms. Yep. The way they work internally, and report is a better uh, example of this than the forms actually, and sort of meets what you're doing here. Uh, yeah, if you actually look at one of those, yeah, pull one up that you've you've gone to, yeah, fold it open, and then go to that route in the UI. Yeah, so go to account and account list. Yeah, view all. Okay, now. Here are the various features that I want. One, I want to be able to load the raw rows and I want to optionally be able to paginate them. Yep. So the UI loaded data is what mm -hmm. I loaded. UI current rows has to do with the fact that you might want to transform them in some way. You might want to filter them. Yep. You might want to sort them. Yep. So the result of filter and sort, instead of doing it in the UI dynamically every time, like you're talking about, I cache it right there, <clears throat> right? So the sequence uh -huh. is you load it, and then I run the current filter slash sort on it and put the resulting list of items in current rows, and that's what I render. Actually, it's one step further. It's one step further. Yeah. Uh, if you've specified pagination, yep. then I render a subvec of that. So current rows is after pagination? No, current rows is before pagination, but after sorting and filtering because Pagination is a subvec, and that's always constant time on a vector, no matter how big it is. Got it. Okay. So I didn't need an ex another cache. Okay. Right. Got it. So, and you see UI cache up there that has some other information. Actually, there is right. So if you fold open the UI cache, I'm caching an additional set of things, and that's that. If you think about it, when you go to do uh, filtering, that's done after sorting. Mm -hmm. And so if you change the filter, I don't need to resort. Oh, wait, uh, I, I presume you went the other way. First you filter, then you sort. Well, if I do it in this order, if I sort first, 
Yeah. And then I filtered. It's still sorted. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Moving things. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Right? Got it. So the idea here is when you do uh, a filter, I don't redo the sort. I yep, start with the sorted list and just filter it and come up with the filtered rows, then put it in current rows, then do the pagination. Got but it. if you change the sort order, then I have to regenerate the sorted, regenerate the filtered, regenerate the current. Clever. Current rows. Yep. Right. So this is how I'm doing it in report. I'm doing it right there on the component, just using additional cached locations. Yeah. So that the component itself is just able to track locally things like this. So yeah, just throw it in a UI slash, you know, uh, pagination cache or next previous cache or whatever, just mix them up. Oh, 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 oh yeah. So you're saying, uh, store this in UI. Actually, I Navigate thought you said something. Cache, nav cache, whatever. You know, I mean, yeah. naming is the hard part, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, nav map. Why? Yeah, why not? This. Uh, because that's not what it is. It's a navigation map, right? You've got an X and a previous. Right? Yep. You've already uh, got the map layout, so. Well, I'm uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I get it. You, yeah, you you get. It. That's good enough. We don't have to yeah. dispute the names and such. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Good. And then that's that lives in. So I thought you were going to recommend storing this in a top level thing like story, you know, a peer story ID, component ID. You're saying park it on the component of. You can do either one. Yeah. So is it is it component local or is it not component local? To me, it's component local, right? Because if you're on the search one, there's the whole right there's the whole thing of filtering it down to your search, et cetera. Like there's more concerns. This is why I was saying it should really just be one component, right? Yeah. Just write it once and all this stuff just works. Um, so you've got these same concerns that are already in DFSC report. I mean, they're yep. already written for you in DFSC report, except for the keyboard shortcut kind of thing, like in this tracking. And so this is something you could kind of add on. It is something you're adding on as a concern of, I want to keep track of where the current previous and next are. So if the list is super large, J and K work quickly. Right. Yep. Actually, if the list is really large, you're probably going to paginate it, and the sub list that you're actually going J and K over is small. So, I'd say this is <clears throat> underindicated. But, but just in yeah. terms of your generic question, yep. that's what I do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. I I rarely find the need to put things at the top level of the map. The only exceptions are things like session information, right? right. Where lots of different components need to share it. Yeah. Uh, right. The current route information, for example, that, that might be something that I put up there at the top level of state. Things that are truly global and needed to be seen by multiple things. Yeah. I mean, current routes one I can re-derive by looking at the state of the router. So I wouldn't necessarily store that there, but. Right, and so this, this then gets back to the question of like, all right, which component is active or being displayed? Is it mm -hmm. search or main or is it both, right? Life gets simpler if I just <laughs> get rid of that by uh, parking it all in one component. Yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, which I think, you know what? I think like 30 lines of code just disappear. <laughs> I just yeah. Yeah. trash this. Okay, yeah, this is great. Um, I I should not write any more code that has to figure out what state I'm in. That's flipping awesome. Um, and I was actually thinking ahead. Um, so I think I, I'm going to publish this. Uh, um, but, but just so you know, I, I'm actually I'm resisting paginating this for now just because what mm -hmm. I really want is um, I mean, it's actually kind of fun to <laughs> uh, the route look at the folklore stories. I'm sorry? The route was a lot faster that time. Oh, good. Okay, great, great, great. Um, uh, it's, it's actually, you know, it was actually kind of fun to like just go to a random story, <laughs> just go to a random story. Um, but uh, I, I would just publish this as is, uh, as uh, uh, to show people, all right, you know, here's some toy. Examples. In fact, just so you know, I'm, it's, I'm wondering, I'm, just for my own educational purposes, I may actually end up replicating your um, next tutorial and porting it to Fulcro. 
Well, that'd be awesome. I just haven't had the time. Yeah, yeah. No, for, I, for I me, it's, it's like valuable thing, and I've written so many things. It's just like, yeah, that tutorial is going to fall up. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's like I, I just stumbled onto it today. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, that's that's what I'm trying to replicate in my head is like to be able to solve these problems. Yeah. So, so looking ahead, what I really want to do is port my the Trello card manager, and there, right? I do filtering and sorting, <laughs> and so I, you know, I think my, I think I, I would actually like to use Falco rad and just you maybe i use it to render or i'll just render it myself um, mm -hmm. um just so i can take advantage of your filtering sorting um and maybe pagination too mm -hmm. um I mean, if you go so, look at that that's coded in a ui state machine yeah and so you can follow what's going on with the data model without having to understand anything about the UI or the, yeah, you know, how it's rendered. If you just get the idea that, oh, it's going to go through this step, this step, this step. If you go look in report CLJC in RAD yep. at the, at the deaf state machine of how that works, yep. it should be just clear <clears throat> day. Yeah. And I did use it before and, and so I don't foresee any problem. But I just, I just want to say, I, I was just kind of reciting it to you just to make sure it didn't trigger any red flags. Hmm. Okay, good. All right, this is great. By the way, and this is actually useful to me. <laughs> this is this is great. Okay. Um, okay, Tony, I think we're just doing great here. Okay, get mode, set mode. That makes uh, a little more sense. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Um, and instead of living in a mode thing, we'll just park it in the component. Um, right, exactly. I just combine those into one component. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't switch it around like that. Right. I mean, and the mode, if you wanted to use some sort of mode like that, it is sort of its own sort of, like you've sort of implemented the UI routing concern yourself, right? You're saying show this or that depending on this piece of state. Yeah. And that piece of state lives in one place, right? Yeah. It's in the mode component that happens, right? It has a, a triple, a tuple yep. Yep. of exactly where to go to the mode. So yeah. Okay. Get mode and set mode are trivial to write. Perfect. And so all you gotta do is necessarily wrong with that. You've just kind of implemented a, a kind of a sub routing concern in your code. It's just when you're talking about all these other features you want, it's like, why don't you just make this one component? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like most people would have a search field on that anyway. Right. Okay, perfect. So, uh, uh, alternative <laughs> sub routes. Uh, but we're going to, we're going to obviate the whole thing by just making it one component. Yeah, exactly. good. And then all I don't you know do is sub routes would necessarily be any better other than you'd get the URL URL integration with rad. Yeah. Right. That would be a nice kind of side effect of the sub route thing. Perfect. But in this case, I don't think you want it. Like and then I just need to change the mode, the ident, right? Uh it's just instead of going to mode, it will go to stories container. No, no, no. I no. you're not gonna have a mode. You're just gonna have a search field always. That's what I was Ew. proposing. But then, wait a minute. Uh, oh, and then, and then, what you render is based on whether this the search results is empty or not. Right. Yeah. Isn't that how most UIs work? Yeah, yeah. And then, what what takes you? There. And then, do I need a button that says clear search or something? Like, how do I get back to the sure. show all? Yeah. Okay. Just something clears it. So, all right. <laughs> all right. Great. 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 Um, I mean, that's what I would do if you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Love it, love it, love it. You're very clear headed. In fact, let, let me write this down. Um, mode will go away. Replace with search field always being on main screen. If search results is not empty, which field? I'm sorry? I think you want to say search field, not search results. Well, oh, oh, it's not filter. I'm sorry. It, it's not a filter. It's like you search when you hit the search button. Yeah. It go. It does a Python query. Sure. To do it there. Wait. Yes, I understand that. Oh. Oh, oh, you're. Just, I see. I see. I see. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so it's, it's search results that come from the server. Okay, and that gets rid of mode. You just want to render the search results? 
That's what I'm saying. I don't understand why there's an if there. If the search field is empty, mm -hmm. well, right, and you search, you just get all results. Yeah, I'm not sure if that. <laughs> I don't know. What, yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess that's right. Um, uh, it's actually this actually executes a query with an empty string, so I'm not sure right. what happens. <laughs> and with an empty string, what the server should you could either make the server ah respond with all of them, which it looks like it's what it did. Uh, maybe. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. Um, I mean, it already works. It already does what you want. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, although you're trying to say I've pulled them all, but maybe I want to search locally in what I've got, so I don't have to reload them. Yeah. I, I think you're giving too much credit for. Okay. okay. I, I think I got it from here. This is good. Okay. All right. Um, okay. This is great. Um, Where would I store a map of the navigations? It's the answer is not in another mutation. You store it in the component, and you execute. And where you render it, when when you create that, you do it as a post mutation. Upon load of the new thing. Yep. As a. Yep. Yep. I mean, these days I would do it. I, the trivial way to do it is with a post mutation, but that that means that every time you mount it, you're going to reload it, and you kind of tied your loading to. The component first mounting, uh, I put it in the state machine so that because there's several reasons why you want to to you know load the thing and and then update this map, and that's why I said if you review the FSC report, right, you'll see the different events that come in. I, I I'm doing different amounts of work to refresh all the things that go with that event. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so it becomes a lot less. You, you, as soon as you get into a complicated scenario, and that's why I built the UI state machines, yeah, uh, constructing it out of the individual primitives of mutations gets yeah. to be kind of messy, especially since you don't have a, a consistent hook point, you know, to, to put the group of logic. It's just kind of scattered everywhere. Right, right. Is there a logical place in a RAD report where I would... Uh, uh, so, you're saying modify the state machine. No, I'm saying you could make your own state machine for your own component, or you can do that. That you can also do that. Okay. Um, you can you can in the in DFSC report and DFSC form, there's uh, a form and or report option called like form slash machine or report yep. slash machine where you can yep. tell it the state machine definition to use. Okay. And so I've done that myself in my own projects. I'll. Because all, all a state machine definition is a map, right? And the report state machine is really simple because it stays for most of the time in one state. It's only when it's loading that it switches to some different states. <laughs> yeah. And you can just associate in some additional events that you could pass in that state and done. Okay. Now, you've got, now you've got something that can respond to additional events and you just say trigger that event on that state machine and bam. Okay. Awesome. Okay. This is great. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to actually learn state machines yet <laughs> okay uh the next one is when switching modes how do we prevent the five second uh delay before the frame loads i think we just answered that it was uh ghost with uh, start real stuff. i mean the, the what i always do is i just open up the performance tab of of chrome and yeah you know, yeah that one and hit record on the far left and do the thing that's slow Wow. And then stop the recording and then it'll give you a flame chart and then you can figure out what's actually sucking it all up. This is where the flame chart comes from. Yeah. Yeah. So make that bigger. Cause it's, it's got a whole bunch of crap in it. You just kind of uh, stretch it up vertically. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. There oh my go. gosh. So that last one is the one that took forever. Right. And so if you uh, use the scroll bar, you can zoom in. Or, yeah, scroll wheel. Yeah. So, you know, just, and then you can use the mouse to use the scroll bar on the right to move down in the list. So, right. So there was some invoke, commit, root impl, callback, mutation effects, blah, 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 blah. Unmount host components. Yeah, what's all that mess doing? So, yeah, then I would just zoom into, you know, one of those lower layers and, and uh, 
see if you can get it down to code you actually wrote or is being <laughs> on your behalf. Um, and it could be that you're just like triggering some weirdness in React that's part of its its debug helping mechanisms, and that when you run it in prod mode, all this stuff just evaporates. Okay, uh, good enough for me. I'm just yeah. happy to have. Uh, okay, this is great, uh, and so much fun. Okay, let's see here. Let's keep going. This is great, Tony. Um, oh, you know what it is? You're pulling. If you had seven thousand things, you're rendering that list on the left. Yeah. Uh, React is having to yank all those DOM elements off the screen, and that's probably if that's all that cleanup stuff. So, bye bye me. Uh, or paginate, whatever. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Don't put 7,000 things in the DOM, yeah. <laughs> um, where am I next? Uh, oh, yep. Okay, fixed. Um, it's guardrails <laughs> and the 7,000. Oh, 7,000 DOM elements being displayed. Swapped in and out of the display, yeah. Uh, and that yeah. probably would, if you run it in production mode, you might be surprised. It's doing a whole lot of checking of stuff. And in prod mode, it might actually still be reasonable. But yeah, cool. it's not a good practice to render lists that large. No worries. OK, great. All right, um, next question is, um, uh, how do I disable in the authentication state machine? So um, as evidenced by if I restart the uh, or you just want to get rid of auth, it's just yeah. Yeah. You just get rid of the UI concern around off. Uh, and the state machine, there is a, uh, I mean, that one, it's very loose, lightly baked, not really meant to be used. Um, Understood. So uh, I got to tell you, uh, my attempts to do this uh, were not successful, were not very successful. <laughs> let's, let's look here. So uh, at the root, you know, scroll down. Yeah. Right. Uh, I would just strip out line 70. I would kill the authenticator join. Yep, I just kill that. And then I'd kill the author auth authorization bit. Don't need that guy. Wait, up here? Yeah, you need to kill it in both props and query and initial state and active remotes. So you might want active remote still. And oh, you yeah. want the router for sure. So you're commenting out too much stuff. I so I say you should just kill the stuff that needs killed and leave the rest of the stuff alone. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I see what it is. Um, I don't want authorization. I want active remotes. You don't want authenticator, but you right. do want router. Yes. OK, got it. And then and same thing in query. You don't want authenticator or authorization. Authenticator or authorization, right, right. Uh, you took the, oh yeah, you got, okay, you got part. Okay, yep. Same thing with initial state, you don't want authenticator. Um, all right, then logged in, you don't care about, so just get rid of that whole line. Username, you don't care about because you don't have users now. Uh, when logged in, yeah, I, I would just raise the, uh, uh, too scary for now. I, I, I want to bring it back in later. Yep. All right. And then uh, that can't be it. There, uh, if logged in, yeah, I'll fix that. And then get rid of the, yeah. I mean, I would just raise these. I just like, <laughs> then you don't have to render the authenticator anymore in that segment. That's it. We're done. Uh, get rid of the 137. You got the transact on the authenticator stuff, but yeah, that should do it. I mean, I would just clean up the dead code is what I yep. do. <sighs> and then change the UI main router. So, that, you know, maybe you start on the account list page or whatever. Like yeah. That. Awesome. And Love there it. is a call if you look at the client CLJS, I think is, is the entry point file. Uh, scroll down the bottom of that where the startup logic is. Scroll up just a little bit, see the auth start. You don't need that anymore. Line 93 to 92. Yeah. Eh. 
Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to, I mean, that does, so no, that's fine. Yeah, I just comment out that line, you don't need it. So if I do a, oh, this is great. Super. Um, maybe one last niggling question is, if you look at the first frame that's rendered, it's just what oh, I, I see. Um, it's this empty scroll bar list. Yep. So if I wanted a initial state, if I actually wanted to show kind of like an empty something, That's just a DOM issue. That's not a state issue. You know the list is empty. Yeah. So so this one is empty. Got it. So nothing's blocking. It's just uh, empty state. Display something. Yep. Got it. Yep. Tony, this is fabulous. Um, I am, and it sounds like the idea of porting the your Omnex tutorial to Fulcro is actually would be a useful, um, useful I think for me and potentially useful for others. I think there there are definitely things in there. I mean, there's a lot of Omnexisms in there that don't exist in Fulcro. Yep. So. Like the the client side parser isn't a thing. Like you can install a Pathom client side parser if you want, but in terms of feeding the UI, that was a design of Omnext. I abandoned that completely. I thought yeah. that was a that was not the way I wanted to build UI. And um, is it possible just to keep it inside of dev cards? Is there any reason that it couldn't shouldn't? Um, I don't think anyone has written a wrapper for Fulcro applications in dev cards, but no, there's no specific problem. I mean, the dev cards that you're looking at there for the on, those are written and untangled and the integrations won't work with Fulcro three. And so, would it make sense to make it more look like more like this? So if you want to do that, you could steal the macros that I've used for the book. That's, that's open source as well. You can just go to the developer guide on the Fulcro GitHub repository. Yeah. And, and I've just got a def example thing so you can look and it's just, you just make an ASCII doc document and then you can embed the applications in there. Um, that might be a good pattern to follow because then you'd be making an interactive book. Yeah. And so literally- I was intending to do more of. I mean, it might even make more sense for you to pull the exercises that you think are useful out of there. Yep. Oh yeah, not with the book because you don't want to have to compile the, the... So that's the nice thing about the Om next tutorial is if you run it locally, you can actually edit the code and do the exercises right right there in the in oh. the basis thing right that was the that was the reason i wrote it the way i did with dev cards yeah so you can check out the project and edit the code and and complete the exercises right there got it uh, because it's more than <laughs> there's actually a, a code base behind it that's rendering this Exactly. Versus, uh, this is strictly in the document. That's strictly in the document, and you could check out the developer's guide and edit the source code as you go to, to do the examples. Mm -hmm. But you could also then break all of the, you know, it's it's a lot to compile and reload for the ASCII doc, etc. It's not a good layout for it. Right. Um, whereas something like workspaces or dev cards. So workspaces might, might be the better example. Workspaces will already work. If you use my fork of workspaces, it already works with Fulcro 3. So okay. yeah, it would be easier to develop it there. So um, I th and you have think... to do some of the same tricks like I did here where I, I named the chapters alphabetically so they would sort yep. right. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think maybe my plan would be, all right, I'm going to bring in workspaces into the Fulcro Red template. And maybe I'll, and maybe I'll be just like I have been doing here, like these toy things. Those now move into uh, individual cards. That did take a long time. <laughs> that was leaving the screen though, right? Going between the button tests should be fast. Oh, why would leaving take a long time? Because React's doing all that work to clean up the DOM. It does yeah. that even, a, oh, oh, cool. That's oh, what I it's see. doing. Yeah, got it, got it. I, I, because this is all one app. <laughs> I'm not actually leaving, <laughs> right? I kind of forgot that. Awesome. Well, uh, Tony, this has been uh, as, as great as Friday was. Uh, this has been even better. <laughs> so, uh, well, hey, I appreciate it. Uh, this is thanks for jamming me into your day, and uh, uh, I got as much out of it as last time. And 
hey, thank you for uh, uh, agreeing to do this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, are you going to, uh, that, that way you end up spinning your wheels. And and uh, and a weekly cadence more like this, where like, uh, let's, let's actually, I, I'm looking for big jumps in learning, <laughs> not, not little yeah. ones, but uh, that'd be great. Hey, Tony, th this is uh, super. And um, I actually, in my head, um, really the whole reason why I wrote that big Slack message was I was trying to, in the moment, write down some things that, to frame kind of what I think will be probably about a 4,000 word blog post that says, hey, look, I, I don't want to learn CLJFX. I did, and it didn't get me to where I wanted to go because now mm -hmm. I'm in this weird niche that no one else is in. Uh, I tried the membrane thing, but uh, it, you know that's took, that took me in a direction that's even smaller than CLJFX. And like, I don't want to be writing transport code or serialization code. And I, I feel like this is really, um, I view it as just a high leverage investment. And I'm really trying just, to, uh, just, just describing very deliberately why it's worth my time. So yeah. Um, I mean, it is still, it's a niche. It's a very tiny niche. <laughs> Actually, I, I, if the niche is people who don't want to waste their time on um, transport and routing, <laughs> it's like, I don't think that's a small niche. Anyway, so. You know, I mean, in terms of, of active users, like, you know, yeah, because of this learning curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Folker is not highly adopted. It's, you know. I, I'm I'm a realist about it. I I I maintain these tools because I use them and and think yeah. they're good and you know, like that's that's why it exists and why I keep going with it. But uh, I'm none, I'm under no delusions that this is like a popular <laughs> tooling, right? Like there's the, Reframe has more downloads in a week than I've had. In a year, <laughs> you know? Like I just it isn't popular. Uh, but maybe we can. Uh, and I have no messianic goals of. Uh, uh, but I, mean, I just, I think the purpose of the post will be to say, Hey, look, if, if these are things that you don't want to spend time doing, like this is a phenomenal investment. So yeah, that, yeah. that's what I think. And you know, to be honest, I, I'm just saying, you said you were going down these paths. That oh, oh, right, right, right. Like right. Like membrane and it's like, I don't think I'm any more popular than any of those. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 maybe smaller than Java effects, but like, um, the payoff for job effects is not large enough to, to warrant the amount of time. So, uh, yeah. whereas I think that the equation is quite different here. So, yeah, no, I mean, if it fits, if it fits what you're doing and like I said, I, I built it to build business applications cause that's kind of what I work in and it's what I plan to continue to work in. And it works pretty well for that. And I've even built, I mean, I worked with a, uh, Oh, I should note the time here. So we stopped at about two fifty. So Sweet. billing you for chatting. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, uh, you know, I, a friend of mine had a, had a business he wanted to start that had to do with like online, online board gaming, basically. Yeah. And so I worked on a prototype for that in Fulcro and I was actually using 3.js and was doing a really a 2D game board using a 3D rendering engine because that was fast, right? Yeah. It, was, it rendered fast. And I was using Fulcro for the state and data management, including the, the board management of where things were going. But then 3JS is a mutable system. So I actually wrote a second like reconciliation <laughs> layer that could use the Fulcro state map to yes. reconcile with the mutable things that had to be kept in state for, you know, OpenGL to render like the board. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it works fine for that. Yeah. So you can use it, you know, it's pretty widely applicable and it's really nice to have that normalized data model just in any application. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, awesome. Well, hey, Tony, uh, thank you again. And um, hey, I look forward to uh, potentially engaging you in super short calls too. So um, I'm <laughs> and, uh, uh, so thanks for availing that uh, yeah, sure. to me potentially. So, well, hey, listen, good luck on your um, contingency uh, actions yeah. there. And uh, again, uh, crossing fingers, praying that uh, all of it is, uh, you know, uh, for no good reason at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Either way, it'll be fine. Well, enjoy the weather uh, out there while you're there and uh, catch you soon. Okay. Talk to you soon. Thank you again. Bye-bye.